Hi, I'm Christian. And I'm Vera. From LR Time. And in this episode, we want to see if a Discovery 4 is really an upgrade over a Discovery 3. Talking about used vehicles. Of course. <laughs> I mean, there's no new Discovery 4. Yeah. Okay, so why would we want to talk about a Discovery 4? Well, there are two reasons. First of all, this is the most asked out of context question we get on our YouTube channel. Should I buy a Discovery 3 or should I buy a Discovery 4? So we want to address that. The second reason is we bought a Discovery 4 just a couple of days ago to replace our Freelander. We are really sorry. It goes. Maybe we show it with the British flag. No. The video. No. Like when we throw it down the ship, when yeah. the coffin drops in the water. No. Is it worth the extra money you got to spend for a Discovery 4? And we thought we're going to bring our evaluation, which is, you know, fairly new context for us because we just own it for a couple of days and all we did so far is reading out the faults and cleaning it for a couple of days because we bought a non-detailed one from a dark owner. I think I now it's a third day he's cleaning. <laughs> and trust me, there are two ways to get rid of dog smell. Okay, either you disassemble the part, replace some of the carpet, clean everything down to the detail and put in an ozone generator for half a year. This is one way, or you simply buy a dog. We thought we're gonna put it into a few subcategories. And the first one is price and market value. The second one is the manufacturing quality. And the other one is features and functions. And of course, it's out of our point of view after seven days of ownership. So talking about price and market value, you really need to spend in Germany a lot more money for a Discovery 4. Overall, a Discovery 3 is between 5 and 10,000 euros more in the range of 120,000 kilometers. 5 to 10,000 euros more. That's a lot more money. If you think about it, if that doesn't give you anything else what you really need, that's a lot of money. So you have to think twice if you buy a Discovery 4. It must offer a lot more stuff um, for five to 10,000 euros because we're talking about vehicles which cost only between 10 and 20,000 euros. We bought this vehicle with only 85,000 kilometers. That is really, really low mileage. Um, probably one of the lowest ones in Germany. And the penalty um, in order to afford it was the body damage it has, a couple of engine faults, and also the very, very serious dark smell on the inside. We paid only 21,000 euros for this vehicle with 85,000 kilometers. That is an extraordinary price because there is no smell in YouTube, okay? Let me open the window here for a moment. <sighs> okay, now it's better again. So we got to take care of that. This will bring it back up to like 28 to 29,000 euros the way it is equipped. So for us, it's an extremely good deal. It's actually that good that we wouldn't be able to afford it if it would have the full price. The resale value on a car drops significantly faster when the car is newer and aging than it is when it's older and aging. In other words, when you buy a Discovery 3, which is only like maybe 10,000 euros, the previous owner lost most of the value of the car and you're gonna lose equivalently less because right now these vehicles are going up in price significantly in Germany, simply because they're disappearing. And if you find one, you're gonna have to spend more and more money in the next few years. You have to consider this, but if you buy a Discovery 4, and you spend 35,000 euros on it because you want to get one with less than 100,000 kilometers on it, that car is going to drop on you a lot more. So from that perspective, from the purchase value, the Discovery 3 in my rating right now is the better buy. It lost most of its value and you get more car for your money. 
If you don't want certain features in the car, which only the Discovery 4 can offer, it's not as good as a value as a Discovery 3. That is a clear statement, is it? Yes. Okay. I would talk about manufacturing quality. A lot of our YouTube comments are, just get a Discovery 4. That is for me personally the most hated comment you can make on our YouTube channel. This is just as bad as just get a Toyota or just get a Jeep. I think it is not a true statement. If you have a Discovery 3 with a lot of problems, getting a Discovery 4 will certainly not improve that situation. I know that after one week of ownership. This car is not a better manufacturing quality. When a car manufacturer does a facelift, trust me, quality is the least of their problems. And trust me, especially Land Rover gives the least about quality on the facelift. They don't, that's not how they function. They function about cost reduction and sales. And what they do for cost reduction and sales is they get their parts from cheaper vendors with better features. At least that's their intent. So they will ban certain vendors and suppliers and get the same parts for less money with more strict conditions from the next supplier. So this is a really complex topic, but a facelift is almost never an improvement in manufacturing quality. That is, that's a fact. And I work in the automotive industry for 32 years. And we're not talking features and functions. Manufacturing quality is how good is the component manufactured, how good is it fitting, and will it fail based on quality, not based on design, okay? You can design something poorly and it will fail, but you can also design something properly and then manufacture it poorly and it will fail. This is what we're talking about, manufacturing quality. Okay. See how she is following him? Why is it always the other way around when we bike? Should I pass? Yeah, pass. There's a... Okay. Let's talk features and functions because this may make up for the additional price. One thing is really a big, big improvement and this is the uh, available engine power. That is significantly more here. This is the SDV6 yeah. with 256 horse and stunning 440 foot-pound of torque. That's 600 Newton meters. Just to compare that, the previous LR3 with the TD6 engine and 190 horse had 450, no, 440 Newton meters of torque. I don't know the foot-pounds, but the bottom line is, a Dodge Challenger 5.7 liter Hemi V8 delivers only 398 foot-pound of torque in a naturally aspirated engine. So this diesel engine with 440 has sure a absolutely stunning pull. So that might be a buying criteria for some people. It certainly was for me. This was why I was looking for this particular trim level. Also, this engine comes with the ZF HP8 transmission, which even has the steering wheel shifters to it. And that makes it an extremely powerful rig. That is a big advantage that this powerful diesel engine is available. And we got lucky enough to find one and get it. And this is a great feature. This is a thing you just simply can't get in an LR3, but it comes with a huge penalty. Let me tell you that the reliability on this engine, especially maintenance and repair cost, if you have it done by Land Rover, is significantly higher than the regular TDV6 engine. This engine in the facelift is also not known to be a big improvement in reliability. It has the same... Uh, oh, geez. It, one? it has the same problems than the TDV6 from PSA, the previous one. It can have crankshaft failures, it can have turbocharger failures. There are new problems associated with that more complex engine. This engine is not an improvement in quality. If you want to get 256 horse in 2014 out of a 
3 liter diesel engine, you gotta put a lot of technology into it. If you just compare that horsepower output with a regular standard diesel engine by a US manufacturer right now, you can see that this is a superior performance of that engine. Is that enough about it? Yes. Yeah, okay. On the first point of view, it, it looks like it is a much better and much more well-equipped vehicle, but it really isn't. When you take, for example, the infotainment system of this vehicle, it looks nice. It got, you know, colorful LCD displays. It got a nicer color touchscreen and it has a Bluetooth connection with um, audio to it, with music to it. But really, when you look at the infotainment system in the dash, it doesn't do anything that else than in the Discovery 3. It has no additional functions to it. You can scroll through the menu, you don't find anything your Discovery 3 doesn't have. It's just fancier. So it's a typical facelift. It doesn't give you much more. It gives you one function more, in particular to the larger engine, to the larger diesel engine. The car has no dipstick. So it lets you check the oil only over the infotainment system. And guess what is one of the biggest known failures on the in the internet? It's the sensor failure of the oil level inside the sump. And this car has it, so I know all about it because I researched it already in detail. And trust me, that is a failure you don't want to have. It's a 1500 euro repair at Land Rover. So the dipstick of the Discovery 3 I miss that one. <laughs> is really the better option. So this is one of the nice facelift functions you get in a Discovery 4. And one of our upcoming videos will be how we fix that. That's a serious repair. Then um, there are things like the push button start. This is the first vehicle we ever have with a push button start. Not even our Challenger had that because it was too old. Now I'm thinking about is that really better? Hmm. I'm not so sure about it. I know the push button is exactly there where I used to have my cell phone mounted. Yeah. So I can't put it there anymore. So I got no spot for my cell phone. The second thing is we had it happening on the second day that Vera walked away with the key oh. in her pants while the car was running. Okay. So you got to deal with that, that you don't have that key to start your engine. In my opinion, that is something you don't really need. Why would that be an improvement, that you don't have a key? More, many cars have push-button starts, so I don't want to talk down on that, but I would like a key I can stick in somewhere. Watch my rims. Oh. The Bluetooth system, okay? Yes, a Discovery 3, at least in the trim level we have, does not have Bluetooth music. And this car does have it. So that is an improvement in the stereo system of this car. But it was easy to upgrade the Discovery 3 with Bluetooth. And let me tell you, this Bluetooth here got one major flaw. It comes with a iPod USB plug and it comes with a USB USB plug. That was close. The USB USB plug is there so you can plug in a memory stick and play music off that memory stick. The iPod is a device out of former days where, which was used to play music. Now you would think you can charge your cell phone over one of these two plugs and then put it in the center console. No, you're wrong. As soon as you plug your iPhone into the iPod or the USB, the audio system is syncing, it's supposed to play music from it. And that function is not compatible with your iPhone. You can only play music from your iPhone over Bluetooth. So you can charge it using these plugs, which means you gotta plug in into the regular USB charger. I gotta say, the only advantage this Bluetooth system gives us now is when there is a call coming in that it automatically shifts over to the phone. Mm -hmm. I'm not so sure if this is worth the money here. Talking facelift upgrades, the clock, <laughs> okay? Yes, a Discovery 3 had only one little digital indicated clock. And we have another clock here. Okay. And one here. The brakes. The bottom line is the brakes of this car are significantly stronger than in the Discovery 3. There's the G-Wagon next to us. 
okay? Yeah. Now, why don't we buy a G-Wagon? Because it's like for uh, 45,000 euros for a 25-year-old car with 350,000 kilometers. That's exactly right. Good That's summary. And same reason why we don't drive a Toyota. Christian, it's what? not recording. Okay, yeah. start recording. Now, let's talk about features and functions, but especially technical data. The approach angle on the Discovery 4 is one degree worse than on the Discovery 3. Then the departure angle is 1.5 degrees worse on the Discovery 4 than on the Discovery 3. We're always talking off-road mode here. The other thing is the, what was that called? The breakover angle. That's this angle you know, below the car, I know you off-roaders know it, but we got also other viewers. It's that angle between your wheels, so when you want to go over a hump, so the smaller that angle is, the better it is. 90 degrees would be really good, and 180 degrees would be you can only drive on a flat. So that is actually 1.2 degrees worse. Vera wrote down the height of the vehicle in off-road mode is 51 millimeters higher. They increased it for some reason without giving us additional ground clearance. So I would say for a tough off-roader, that is actually a downside. And vehicle weight. Vera wrote down that the average vehicle weight went from 2,500 kg to 2,568 kg. These are average weights of the vehicle in the HSE trim level from Land Rover. That's 68 kg more but in average. It is, by the way, true for our vehicle. And the car got now seven seats. Yeah. So I, th that's one person, half a person in some countries. But still, that's a lot of mass, what they added. The total weight of the vehicle, so the vehicle including trailer on the Discovery 3 was 6,730 kg and on the Discovery 4 it's 6,740 kg. So it oh. went up 10 kg but under a penalty of 68 kg but the bottom line is for the end user it's not a improvement. So the facelift is in terms of total vehicle weight and gross weight not a improvement. Is that a good statement? Oh yes. Okay. In the Discovery 3, you, the weight you can add inside the vehicle, to your vehicle, was 730 kg on average, and in the Discovery 4, it's 672. And to some off-roaders, taking rules in their country serious, those 70 kg may make the difference. So I gotta say, the notes you made are really helpful for my lecture. So there, there is some data which did not change compared to before, for example, the fuel capacity or the ground clearance. They could have made an improvement there, but they didn't. The Discovery 4 has a little bit of a nicer interior lighting. That is called ambient lights, okay? But they can be annoying. For example, they got ambient lights in the door handles now. And when you dim the interior car lights, the lights in the door handles stay bright. The remote control. They added a button to the remote control. Bottom line is I can turn my lights on and off now and I can raise and lower the vehicle. And on the Discovery 3, that was a programming function. I had to choose either or. Vera says the heated seats are better. Yeah. In I the like Discovery that. 4. I think so too. For some people, heated seats are really important. Yeah. It's for us a buying criteria. Even my Challenger had to have heated seats because yeah. it's getting cold up here. But in other regions, heated seats are no option, okay? They no no topic at all. They did improve the bings and bongs. Yes. In the Discovery 3, you have the same bings and bongs when a fault occurs as when there is a notification message, which makes you really chill down in your bones. When a bing and bong appears, you look in your infotainment system and you try to estimate how many thousand dollars you have to insert at your Land Rover dealer. So in the Discovery 4, they improved this a lot. They made the bings and bongs volume adjustable over the infotainment system. So you can downsize that volume. 
yesterday when cleaning underneath the seat we found a lot of disgusting stuff but also a magnet like a refrigerator magnet from Romania so there must have been so I don't know that was from have, Romania yes I would have Holy thought cow. They so that vehicle off. was in Romania. Yes, that vehicle was in Romania. Well, we gotta beat that. And I think it was, <laughs> it was a magnet from Craft Dracula's uh, from um, Castle. Oh wow! That but would, I don't know. I just pulled it out and gave it to you. I didn't yeah. even look at it. Oh, I look, and was, I put it on my foot. You know? Even did you see how it, that drop goes down here? Jesus! One more thing I gotta show you guys. Which of these two manuals? Is the Discovery 3 and which one is the Discovery 4? Look really close. Wrong. Discovery 3, Discovery 4. Okay? By the way, a Land Rover manual is so well written. We have this in German, of course, and not in English. German is not their native language over there in the UK. And it is such a well written structured manual I have not seen in any other vehicle not even in a Mercedes this is a big big huge compliment from me on Land Rover but they left away all the driving skill stuff in the Discovery 4 manual I wonder why in the Discovery 3 manual there is a huge section how you drive off-road why would you leave this out by the way the color is called car is gray and we have no idea what that means driving that car now for an hour her first hour yeah. in this video for you guys yeah i've never driven that car before and she did good only one curb ramp <laughs> oh, shit. No. a conclusion to this video is the discovery 4 a upgrade over a discovery 3 the answer is in my opinion yes it is if the motor and the power output is important to you then it is an improvement hopefully you like this video yeah, hopefully yeah. it helps you to make a decision if, if if you really need a discovery 4 you got anything to add thanks no. for watching oh I didn't know that you were done yeah I'm done this is our okay. outtake so <laughs> so thanks for watching hope to see you next Sunday hope to see you next Sunday Okay, you guys check this out. We sold our Freelander to uh, a neighbor of ours. We're like half a kilometer away from our house and he's got a old Porsche museum. You guys check this out. Isn't that unbelievable? There are more old Porsches back there. So this is incredible. Look at that. Porsche diesel. There's a green one. Porsche diesel. And this old Unimog. Some of these are even licensed. Yeah. So I think this is a good home for our old Freelander. Right? <laughs> yeah, this old Unimark here. We will pay a certain dare. That's a 14 horse. That's a 14 horse. This is this the Glanz the water host? No, 11 PS is the Glanz. Okay, so this is not even the smallest one he got. This okay. is, oh, but that's not a Porsche. It just <laughs> says Porsche on it. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. So this, this is a big one here. Which one is the biggest one? This one is the biggest one? Yeah. So this is a 50 horse. That's pretty awesome. So this is a very, very unique collection of old Porsche tractors. That's a nice and tiny one. They're all in a really good condition. Okay, so you are admiring the portal axles? Yes. So this one is a year 70 and you see here the portal axles back out of the 1970s. What an impressive little rig. 
Yeah, in very nice condition too. So we found the right home for our Freelander, right? <laughs> <laughs> There's one more here. And this one, it's being restored right now. And check this one out. This is an old MB truck. So this one is still in use, but he's got another one for the daily jobs. So this MB truck, a 700, is being used daily. That is an awesome view. So this is another MB truck, also still in operation. MB truck 1000. This is the mower attached. This is Philip's old tractor. Yeah. We put it out in front of our house at one point, so somebody takes it because the crank set is gone. And now it's here. <laughs> this is incredible. So we dropped off our Freelander. That's the new home. We took the license plate off so we can get it unregistered. It's going to be driven on the farm. Very nice, I think. Couldn't be any better. <laughs> Look at this guy. He's going to watch for the Freelander now. <laughs> so this trailer, this horse trailer is also made in the UK. So it fits nicely here. <laughs> 